I dare you to try to keep up with this guy. Songwriter, singer, guitarist extraordinaire, shredder, TikToker, YouTuber, forget every Instagram, social media, you, you, you will not believe this. He is best known for being the guitarist of the band's Dope Throne, Vatican, as well as being the front man to his self-titled band, Polycheck. You won't want to miss this. Welcome to Bassbin TV. Thomas Polycheck. Thank you for having me. It's Thanks a, for being it's an here. Honor. Thank you for this beautiful introduction. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for accepting of our course. invitation with us. Um, Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on your show, man. Super awesome. <laughs> Listen, uh, you are a local here now in Montreal, yep. right? Yep. Um, I first was introduced to you by you coming to rehearse here. Yeah. But when I first um, heard your music, it was more on the country style. Oh, yeah. It's it's evolved a lot throughout the years. It, it Big has time. changed. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Is there is there any type of like reason why what what was your what were your influences from to, from going from country to where you are now because of people that recognize you're more of a progressive you know metal on that yeah. on that side so how did you go from country to that it's a good question i i started with metal that's that was my thing mm -hmm. i started you know being a guitar player shredder whatever. and by the way uh dope throne you mentioned yep. dope throne it's they 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 became you know quite big uh but i wasn't that bad not playing guitar actually I was playing oh. drums so that might surprise wow. you so multi-instrumentalist yeah. I, I guess yeah but uh yeah back then uh i guess you know 15 years ago 15 20 years ago i was mm -hmm. in the metal scene extreme metal all that stuff but then at some point, I wanted to start writing my own music, so writing my own songs. So I just thought, you know, um, I, I felt like I was compelled to write songs with mm -hmm. an acoustic guitar, and it just turned out to sound good and sound kind of country-ish, mm -hmm. folk-ish. So that's how I was kind of introduced to writing my own songs and writing lyrics and all that. But there was always kind of something missing. I wanted to add more instruments mm -hmm. and, and all that. So then... It started with kind of country rock, and then it evolved into um, that with some shred, mm -hmm. some guitar shred, and some keyboards and all that. And I always felt like there was something missing. So then I started to add like odd time signatures yeah. and, and drum solos and all that. And now it is what it is. Just a, a lot of difficult music. You know, <laughs> talking about where you came from, as I mentioned, I was going in a deep dive of yeah. your socials. And <laughs> I came across a photo that you posted, uh, I don't know what age you are, probably like under five, maybe. Okay. And you're playing a left-handed guitar. Okay. And you had said something, you said apparently you had started left-handed, and then once you got your first real guitar, you switched over to right? You saw, did you see a picture of me holding like a toy guitar? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, bro, I didn't even know it was if just I upside should down hold too. it. Yeah, it <laughs> was just like... But yeah, it was. But that was my first guitar, actually. It really? it made sound, and apparently my my parents. I was like three on that picture, three or okay. four. I don't even remember. Uh, but my parents told me that was it was my favorite toy. Really, I always had that in my hands. Mm -hmm. I would carry it everywhere. So at six, my dad uh, was it six or seven? I think it was no, mm -hmm. it was six. He bought me a real half scale guitar. And I started uh, learning chords and all that. So by age seven or eight, I could play like Cat Stevens and all that. Oh, so we didn't start out with progressive metal? No, no. Okay. no. <laughs> but my dad was into uh, prog rock, you know, cool. in the 70s. He was a bit of a prog dad, you know? Was he like Gentle Giant stuff? <laughs> yeah, that right? kind of stuff. Maybe not that much. Mm -hmm. That's really, like Gentle Giant is yeah. really, really crazy. Yeah. Um, he was not that much of a nerd, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Sorry uh, to all my Gentle Giant fans. I love Gentle Giant. I'm, that are friends, I'm a big fan. That are some friends of mine. No, Sorry, I, I'm a big nerd. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, no. So like Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. you know, the, the proggier songs of Led Zeppelin, uh, right. ELP, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Now, you are you're known for your guitar skills. Yeah. You're known for being a shredder. Um, were you self-taught? Did you go to school for this? How did you get to where you are now? 
It's a funny, uh, 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 yes and no. Okay. Like it's a, it's a funny uh, journey that I had. I started with chords, like basic chords, Cat Stevens, that kind of stuff, which my dad taught me because it's all he knew. Uh, <laughs> he was doing it very well, but it's all he knew. Um, and then by age like 12 or 11, 12, I wanted, I, I'd heard Metallica, Kill mm. Them All. Mm. And that was a revelation. It was like, the whoa, record. okay. I didn't even know guitarists could, you know, it was possible to even do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were in like what, probably 99 or 90, uh, yeah, probably like 99 or 2000. Mm -hmm. So there was, you know, shredders. It was a thing. I just didn't know like they existed, like mm -hmm. Ingve Malmsteen and all the, the 80s guys, the Shrapnel mm -hmm. Records. It oh, was a yeah. thing. It, it already existed. I was just not aware of it. Guitar Player Magazine, Guitar yeah. for the Practicing Musician, uh, they, all of those music uh, mags that had actual tablature for yeah. shredders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, was, that was my generation. I yeah. had a pile of like Guitar yeah. for the Practicing Musician like <laughs> yeah. stacked up. You yeah. If so. you didn't know how to play a minor arpeggio, you couldn't play in a band mm. in, in my days. Mm -hmm. Like I had a Charvel guitar. I was literally a guitar player growing up. Yeah. And I switched over to bass based later in in life but guitar was you had to be able to mm. play you know you had to be able to rip and you yeah. had to be able to play at least play arpeggios i wasn't a super shredder but i could like hold my own and i had to learn how to do sweep picking yeah if i didn't play sweep pick sweep picking i literally probably couldn't have played in a band yeah it was like you had like the punks if you yeah. like are not that great you can play in a punk band but yeah. if you want to play in a rock band you got to be able to sweep and yeah and rip mm -hmm. it's like you know uh, like bands like extreme or like mm. they were just like Nuno, pop yeah. rock or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah. the guitarist he can you know he's, yeah you know it's yeah it's another level it's yeah <laughs> so you, you i guess you, yeah you're right you had to be but it's funny because you're mentioning uh, somebody like Nuno. Nuno is pretty much all self-taught. He doesn't understand the chords that he's actually mm. playing. He doesn't he's not theory based at yeah. all. Uh, he can stand up with, you know, the the best of them. Yeah. But you're very much schooled. Yeah, but later in life. Yeah, mm, so it, much it, later, yeah. It it yeah, so when I was introduced to that mm -hmm. shred stuff, I was like, "Whoa, okay, I want to learn to play like that." Mm -hmm. uh, but there was no like like there was shred magazines, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, but there was no YouTube and all that. No. And there was no right. like, on the internet. There was a little bit of stuff tabs that you know people made with like, you know, it looked like like computer codes and all that. <laughs> it was literally fingering. Yeah. It was one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like before yeah. guitartabs.com or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it was, I don't even remember the websites. It was right. like super obscure anyways. Yeah. But so, tablature wasn't music, but there was tablature for guitar. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I didn't know how to read music. I didn't know how to, and I wanted, again, I wanted more. I wanted sure. more than just shredding. Sure. I had reached like the plateau of like, your physical technique, but now you want to understand what you were doing. Yeah, what yeah. I was doing, and I even wanted to, Go beyond what I, you know, beyond the scales that we all hear all the time, the minor mm -hmm. and the major. Beyond the, what you mm -hmm. could imagine. And it's on, yeah. I went to um, audition for uh, the jazz program at uh, University of Montreal. Mm. Cool. And uh, originally they didn't accept me because I couldn't read music. I had failed mm. the, the, the test for the uh, music dictation. Mm. So they were like, but it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's for, especially for somebody who, who, you know, who doesn't, you know, read music you mm -hmm. gotta kind of figure it out if you have a good ear mm -hmm. and you understand a little bit you can kind of understand the intervals mm -hmm. and all that so but it's tough so they they proposed that i do like a a course mm -hmm. um a mise à niveau mm -hmm. that, they, mm -hmm. that they called equivalence uh, to the type of course there to yeah. get you up to speed exactly it's because they want students once i started i was surrounded with musicians that had been playing jazz and right. you know that had gone to CJEB and the way they understood music was completely different but I worked you know I worked hard and I studied mm -hmm. and and now I I know a little more than I did when I started a little yeah bit. a little bit more okay. yeah <laughs> now you've you've not only mastered your guitar but you've also mastered uh your marketing skills in promoting yourself on social media sites yeah so was this haphazard did you just like fall upon like oh i posted something and oh that works or was that literally like i have a plan and this is mm. how i'm gonna do it i'm gonna attack social media by storm and do it like that 
it was it just happened with uh with covid everybody kind of, and especially uh the beginning of tiktok kind of happened at the same time as yeah. covid hit mm-hmm. so um everybody was on tiktok right. everybody so you had a lot of um it was easy to have organic reach with tiktok all you had to do was just post a lot and post stuff that people are interested in right because you've now amassed <laughs> i was checking and across social platforms you've amassed something like a hundred and ten plus thousand followers yeah maybe just from <laughs> posting count. what you like what yeah, you want to see pretty much so you kind of used like a lot of the techniques of saying well i'm not seeing this nobody's really talking about this and i'd like to learn know about more about this i'm sure other people would like mm-hmm. to know more about this also so you sort of like just well, I'm going to just shoot yeah. myself, you know, and do that. Yeah, so yeah. How, how natural did that come to actually first start posting and talking to the camera as opposed to posting things about marketing, you know, mm-hmm. like your band, new song coming out, blah, 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 yeah. playing at this club. You know, that's a totally different type of marketing. Yeah. Now you're literally looking at the camera and saying, hey, guys, yeah. check this out. How comfortable was was that for you? Was that a, a huge transition from well there's something i understood with i'm not a marketing genius by no means i'm just uh, but there's something i understood and that turned out to work for me what would make me want to you know go and follow that page and go and oh that that guy's cool i want to i want to see what you know what he has in store i want to listen to his music right what would make me want to do that right so i posted and I, I i decided to give to the people what i would have liked to see right but you've also understood the importance of like not wasting time when you're posting things and like within the first five seconds you understand why you're on that page yeah who you're watching that's really important. and what it's all about exactly first yes. five seconds first five you seconds. know even oh. even less than that yeah how fast do you scroll like right. how how fast do people mm-hmm. scroll it's got to right. You know, catch your your uh, attention real, yeah. real, fa- really fast. Do you think? Do you think that was like um, something that you had to learn that you were you were watching your videos and maybe going, hmm, maybe I should speed things up again. Were you self editing yourself at times after watching, and how has it changed from the the time where you first started posting on TikTok to now? Well. The cool thing is that because we all do everything ourselves mm-hmm. now on social media, you can see what works and what doesn't. And you can just go, you, what works, you'll know right away because mm-hmm. it'll go viral. People will like it. People will share it. Right. And that's the cool thing about the algorithms. People mm-hmm. talk about the algorithms. Oh, I'm, I'm, the algorithm is screwing me over, blah, blah, blah. But no, really, the, the algorithm, if you know how to use it, right. you don't have to agree with it. If you don't right. like it, then that's fine. Don't right. expect it to work for you. Right. But um, the algorithm is going to show you the things you post that are aligned with, Mm -hmm. you know, what people want on those platforms. I saw on your page, every once in a while, you'll um, do a duet with other musicians. Yeah. And I'm curious, as someone who, uh, like us, grew up in like the live scene, and now you've taken to social media, uh, do you still feel that sense of community uh, with other musicians? Yes, I do. I do. I've I met guys of bands that I was a big wow. fan of, signed up for my lessons. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I made some great connections. Even though it's not you know in person, I met some really amazing people. Still, it's so, like yeah. I tell Albert all the time. Those are some of my favorite videos where I see musicians duetting other musicians, and it ends up being an entire composition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it really fe- makes this like huge world feel cozy. Yeah. It breaks the, the the dichotomy between big artists mm-hmm. that are out and kind of sure. out of reach, so to speak, and the average yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. It's like now everybody's kind of on the same level, kind of. Yeah, sort of the same playing field. Yeah, and yeah. Everybody's Whereas got a shot before, you know, with like uh, MTV and all that, yeah. it was on TV. It was the rock stars, the people oh, yeah. that are. Yeah. You're never going to talk to them or mm-hmm. whatever. No. You're lucky if you get a, a drumstick or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, there were definitely gatekeepers back then. Gatekeepers, yeah. And, and it, you, you shall pass, but <laughs> you shall not pass. That's it. Yeah, that's the thing. So uh, because it was TV, mm-hmm. radio, and all that, but now if the algorithm makes you, you know, it's the new gatekeeper. It's the new gatekeeper. So mm-hmm. it all boils down to: Are you making content that people enjoy? And if you do, right. then right, it's for everybody to, to see. How do you able to keep focus? on 
your original projects now. Does that take a back seat? Because now you're you're literally in a position where, you, where you're like, okay, now I, I have so much work and I have so many clients, more money, mm-hmm. more opportunities to do things, more freedom. Does it give you more freedom to do uh, you know, other solo projects or do you even have time? It's a good question. And sometimes... I guess it depends. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I got to back off a little bit. And I, I really want to focus more on my music, my compositions, my songs. And But yeah, the, the, goal, the goal for me would be to only write music and live off of that and go sure. on tour. And that's everybody's, I guess, not maybe not everybody, but you know. The, the a lot ro- of people that are thriving <laughs> in this industry, that yeah. would be the goal. That, yeah. So, so for me, it is the goal, but I still enjoy... Uh, you know, teaching guitar. That's I, I. You're playing music. At the end of the day, I, at you're the end doing of the day, music mm-hmm. every day. I'm playing music. I'm you're playing. not selling shoes. You're not working in a freaking steel factory. Yeah. You're doing music. I'm every doing day. music. Yeah. At the end of the day, I got to say I'm blessed because of that. Yeah. And um, and I meet people. I meet yeah. like amazing people. Yeah. Through those uh, sure uh, vid- that page and those lessons. That's now your <clears throat> community. Yeah, yeah. You've created your own, you know, community yeah. of musicians, bands that you can either go and spring out and collaborate with also yeah. Yeah, and yeah, do yeah. projects. I'm sure that you have people, you know, also saying, hey, man, would you like to work on this project with me? Yeah. Would you like to play? Do you get situations like that where there are bands that are saying, hey, man, can we hire you to play on our tracks? Yeah, <clears throat> that's happened a few times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But people that come to me, they they generally, they want me to play in the style of Thomas Bolly Joe, because they like my style. So, so. Op- open to all styles, but with your signature sound. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good way to I'll, I'll put it. I'll call you. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah, I, actually. <laughs> actually, yeah. I will call you. Okay, <laughs> fine. Yeah, because it's. I, 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 I have yet to. Um, it's hard for me to define my style. Mm-hmm. I know I have a signature style because. My girlfriend tells me all the time, I know it's you playing, you know, if she hears something, I know that's, if I'm scrolling, I know that's you, because she hears, like, my, she knows my licks and my little twists. Um, uh, so I know I have a style, but I, am I a metal guy? Yes, and not fully. Uh, and yes and no. A blues guy? Not, a, not quite. Jazz? Not exactly. I'm just kind of, all of that, but it, kind of all works you know it's of. it's really inspiring uh, to hear you talk about how you you found like your sound you found your voice especially through social platforms mm-hmm. um myself and probably others find it um there can be a lot of pressure to kind of either follow trends yeah. um what's hot what's not um how do you stay on track and remember what your voice is when there's so much noise well, okay. My for me, I don't want to say it's always the case, but mm-hmm. for me, if I try to follow a trend, mm-hmm. it usually doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And I've tried because on TikTok, there's those trends that people. So in the beginning, I would try, but yeah. it never worked. It kind of shows maybe through somehow in my mm-hmm. attitude that if it's, it's not, not authentic. Exactly, if, it then... just doesn't doesn't do it. Sure. So I do whatever I would like to see. Do you find it sometimes almost like overwhelming to do? Because I know that even doing this podcast Mm -hmm. is like, it's a process. Yeah. And then you're editing and doing it. I know that a lot of the times you're doing shorter clips that are, you know, a little quicker to be able to like punch in and punch out. Yeah. Uh, But do you find it a little overwhelming that you have to constantly keep up with the algorithms of putting stuff out? It is a Mm -hmm. little bit overwhelming. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's, so sometimes it's like, wow, okay, you got to, because especially if it's your main source of income, when you stop, the money stops going. Like You can't stop. You can't stop. Um, it is a little bit overwhelming, but it's, so what I tend to do is I record content in batches. I'll yeah. go like, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not like I have a, a time in, in the week, like a, the Monday morning I do content. It's generally the content will when I'm playing, when I'm practicing or whatever, when I'm teaching in between two students, I'll go like, oh, that was cool. Record. And that's it. Yeah. Right. And I'll come up with like a batch of like maybe 10 videos. And the, the following week, I'll post those videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I tried to, I guess I figured out a way to make it work and 
for it to not be too, you know, time consuming. Optimizing your time. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. And it's not like I n I never like to have to do something to nobody likes to when well, they have to do something. And that's another that's another thing. It's an important point because that's like when I teach what what I teach my students, the most important thing about being a good guitar player is to not have to go like, oh, I have to practice today. Mm -hmm. Sure. I have to practice this thing. I have to the, go with an attitude of like, this is fun. I love to do it. And you'll never have to practice mm -hmm. or like have to do something. You'll, you'll just get good. You'll be playing all the time. And sure. Yeah. Well, I think what you're doing is you're, you're sort of setting yourself a regiment where it's never going to feel like a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where I have to clock in on Wednesdays because I got to do this, you know. Yeah this video for TikTok or I have to do one for Instagram and I have to, you're literally sort of slotting it in your regular yeah. everyday life. Yeah. And that's the way it works. And that's for you. the way it works. And that's how you find balance because I, uh, listen, we're all artists that do not want to work nine to five. Yeah. Do not want a regular routine. And this seems to be like the perfect thing for you where you get your freedom. You don't have to like clock in. Yeah. But you still have to have discipline. There's yeah, still a discipline. Yeah, you have to have discipline. Yeah. You have to do things. Things are not going to happen on their own. So you have to find ways to make it enjoyable and just f feel like it's effortless because it's not effortless. There's nothing right. that's effortless, mm -hmm. but it can, you can trick yourself to make it <laughs> feel effortless. Uh -huh. It's like, it's again, again, it's like, it's like practicing guitar. I never really practice guitar, honestly. I'm not practicing to, to play it. I'm just playing it a little slower and I'm playing it over and over again because I enjoy playing it. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, next thing you know, I can play it. I can play it fast. I can play, you know, so I always feel like I'm playing. You know? And I love that feeling when you get it too. Yeah. When you're like, when you get it, it's like, yeah. Yeah. And it feels effortless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe people don't know this about you, but um, if they meet you in a dark alley, <laughs> they probably don't want to mess with you. You also practice mixed martial arts. And I assume that that's some type of escape from the Instagram posting lessons, music. I mean, although this is your love, you have this other passion. Yeah, yeah. I, I obviously it's not the ideal sport, you know, for a guitar player because of my hands. <laughs> and everybody always tells me, but I, I really enjoy doing that. I discovered again. It goes back to the same kind of mentality that I have with guitar. I, I've always tried to stay fit and to you know lift weights or do cardio. And but before I did martial arts, mm -hmm. I always felt like I had to train, you know. And this martial arts and Muay Thai and, and and all that stuff and boxing made me not feel like I have to train. Mm. I was just, you know, I'm just going, I'm training and I'm having fun. Mm. So that's, you know, that's what it's, it was a way for me to make me enjoy training and stay, staying fit. Yeah. And I discovered a new passion. Yeah. I know exactly what <laughs> you feel. Um, because whenever I used to go to a gym if there wasn't some type of medicine ball or mm. something that I'm throwing or something that's coming yeah. back to me, I didn't feel like I was enjoying myself. And it was just like these, uh, you got to do it and you have to do yeah. it where I want to be keeping fit, where I'm actually doing something that's, that's enjoyable. That's, that's enjoyable. That's, yeah. That's fun. That's it. Yeah. So for you, like literally hitting somebody's face was fun. <laughs> hitting somebody's <laughs> face. I mean, I, it's funny because I'm the nicest guy. I would never fight anybody. Mm. And I try to avoid, you know, uh, 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 fighting at all costs. But I, it's not the fact that I enjoy hitting people. But it's it's kind of like it's a game, you know. It's like a playing chess but with an extra element of adrenaline, mm -hmm. you know. It, it gives me some kind of, you know – Self-confidence. It's something that makes guys confident, you know, when they practice martial arts. It makes them, it makes me a calmer person. It makes me a more, you know, a, a nicer guy, maybe. My son works out and um, he does it because he understands that he needs movement in his life. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't move and does something physically active, 
he's gonna he's yeah. gonna literally go crazy it's all connected right yeah, yeah do you yeah. find is that part of like your reasoning also do you do you have trouble standing still yes i do <laughs> very much yeah and that's that's the thing with guitar you gotta sit down and and mm -hmm. you know i sit for long periods of time so and i have that you know i had the, the i need to move i have that in me so uh for me martial arts is a great way and you don't need to train for a long time you th you train like three or four times a week an hour and that's that's good Training is really intense. Mm -hmm. like really, really. If you train to fight, mm -hmm. it's really intense. It's great that you have this this escape yep. that you can go to, and um, because you 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 have family life, you know people yep. don't understand how how busy you 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 actually uh, are. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. not that easy being a TikToker and a, you know it's like uh, a content creator yeah, yeah. online on social media, earning your keep, but still trying to find balance to who you are. Mm -hmm. And that means you doing things that Thomas likes to do yep. and enjoys and that keeps balance in your life. But yet you need to put food on the table and yep. take care of your family, take care of you, make sure that you're doing things that you love. And it's amazing that you're able to find all of this balance and still be able to be on top of the game of this crazy world of social media yeah. that we have because we're still learning. Yeah, it's still it's relatively changing all the time. And it's constantly changing, yeah. and you're adapting to yeah. it. Yeah. And we 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 applaud you. Oh, thank you on your on your success. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much thank for for much. being on the show. We yeah. we really we really appreciate it, don't we? We do. Yeah, but it's an honor for me to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll catch you next time on Basement TV. Basement TV. <laughs> <laughs>